Hi Life Science students, I'm sure by now you're feeling much more comfortable with doing experiments and answering questions around experiments. And now in our last part, we're looking at designing experiments or experimental design. So this is often what you students find the most difficult and um, I think often because you're not exactly sure what is expected of you. So I'm going to go through now everything that you need to do when you're designing an experiment. Okay, so it's basically follow, making the recipe now. You follow the recipe before, you've answered questions, now you have to make your own recipe. So, you need to give someone else a set of instructions so that they can perform an experiment and get the same results as you get. Okay, so that's very important. If I ask you to bake a cake and I tell you to crack three eggs and mix them, but I haven't told you to get a bowl, then you're going to crack the three eggs on the counter or wherever else you want and not and completely mess it up and certainly will not have a very nice cake. Okay, so that is what you need to think about before you start designing an experiment. You have to be so specific about absolutely everything so the other person who's performing it won't make any mistakes. And then they can get this and they can get the same results that you have gotten or that you expect them to get from doing this experiment. So again, I'm going to stick with this. Okay, and we're going to design an experiment around to determine which substances, apple juice, lemon juice, or egg white, contain glucose. So, you do not do an apparatus list, it's not part of designing an experiment, which means that when you are doing the experiment, when you're explaining how to do the experiment, you need to say with what. You need to say, if you're cutting an apple, cut it with a knife. If you are measuring something, like the length, use a ruler. Okay, all of that. So, again, you need to be very specific. So, we've drawn this picture before. Let's do a test tube rack with your three test tubes. Okay, so, how are you going to design this experiment? When you do this, you need to put it in point form. So, either you can use bullets, which are little dots, or you can use numbers. For me, I feel numbers are clearer because you can see exactly what's going on. I suggest personally you use numbers, unless of course they tell you to use bullets. If they tell you to use bullets, well then you have to use bullets, okay? Otherwise, if you, you're not following the instructions and they won't give you the marks for it. Okay, so you have to make it bulleted point. So this is the idea, right? In your head, you, you understand what's going on. You put in 10 mils of apple juice, lemon juice, albumin or egg white into those. Then you're going to add the, the benedicts to each of those, okay? Right, so there's your benedicts. Then you're going to put them all into a water bath. So here's your water bath. Right, with the three test tubes in. Etc, etc. That in your head, you know exactly what the experiment entails. And if you have time and really try to do this, try plan it a bit like this. Draw the pictures so that in your head you know exactly what to do. So I'm not going to start explaining how to do this experiment by saying add um, apple juice to a test tube. The first thing you're going to do is say get the test tubes. Okay? So what you're going to what you need to do is be very specific. And you start off with, so we sometimes have cats randomly roaming through my videos. You'll just put them over there. Okay, so how do we do this? Firstly, you never use first person. It's a set of instructions for someone else to follow. Just like if you go and look in your recipe book when you bake a cake, it never says you must add three eggs. It just says add three eggs. So it's quite sharp and curt and not very pleasant, but it's really just that set of instructions. So, the first thing is, take three test tubes, okay, and label the test tubes. What are you going to label the test tubes with? A marker. So, test tube A, B, and C. My suggestion, by the way, when you do an experiment, is to always label them quite high up, because if you are putting them into a water bath, you don't want the, the permanent marker to obviously come off. Or if it's not permanent marker, even if it is, the water often takes it off, and then you don't know which is... A, which is B, which is C. Okay, so here you first label it. Then you say, remember, you've got to remember your control variables. Add 10 mils of apple juice to A, lemon juice to B, and albumin to C using a 10 mil syringe. Always say what your apparatus is. And then you can continue. You're obviously going to put it into the water bath. You need to have it for the same amount of time. 
in your head, every single step you say, this is a controlled variable. How am I showing that I'm controlling this variable? And then at, that, at the end, obviously, you will then look for the color change. And once you see the color change, off you go. Okay, and then you need to say what you're going to do with your results. So now you've got the results. This one changed color, that one didn't change color, this one didn't change color. So what are you going to do? You need to say, once you've got the results, put the results in a table and compare the color changes. You need to be able to say at the end of designing an experiment what you're looking for. What, are, what results are you looking for and what are you going to do with those results? So you're looking for a color change and you'll put those results in a table to compare. You also always tell when you're doing an experiment or you're designing the experiment, you tell the experimenter to repeat the experiment because we spoke about this before. You want reliable results. If you don't repeat the experiment, you don't know if the results are reliable. So at the end when you are writing your experimental design, always put down that you must repeat the experiment. Again, repeat the experiment, no personal pronouns. Okay, so quick recap what you need to do. It needs to be short, concise sentences, no personal pronouns. It needs to be numbered or bulleted. Your, it needs to be clear in your head, so very, very sequential. Every, sing, every single thing that needs to be done must be put down. Take three test tubes, label them with a test tube marker, or with a permanent marker, add this with what you're using, okay, so that it's very easy to follow. Also, uh, make sure you say what you're going to do with the results, and then you also include that, that it's important to repeat the experiment in order to, um, in order to get the most reliable results. Okay, that is the end of the Prac Skills group of lessons. Um, I would love some feedback, especially if you would like some more um, guest appearances by my cat. That's Maddie, Maddie Rainbow, just so you know, in case you're interested. And or give me comments if the cat must go and you would like me to repeat this one without the cat. I will do that with pleasure. Give me some feedback. Please leave some comments. Also, please subscribe. I'm going to do lots more um, content-based lessons in the near future. I hope you feel much more confident now about doing pracs. Cheers.